order the Morton Grove Public Library Board of Trustees regular meeting December 13, 2012, 7 p.m. We could stand and recite the pledge. or corrections? If not, can you call the vote? Mr. Evers? Yes. Mr. Kelman? Yes. Mr. Goldstein? Yes. Ms. Novick? Yes. And Ms. Peters? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, public comments for agenda items only. Do we have any tonight? None. President's report, I would just like to wish everybody a happy and healthy holiday season. So enjoy yourselves and spend some time with your family. Treasurer's report. Treasurer's report. 
Treasurer's report, um, you've received the um, summaries for this month's uh, financial activities for the library. Does anybody have any questions about it? We just had our meeting before this and there was nothing out of the ordinary that, that happened, so I'll pass that out to you. Well, if we don't have any if we don't have any questions, I would like to ask what what is the wording that you wanted? You want to you know, it and I want motion to motion to accept, motion to accept, accept the, treasurer's the treasurer's report. Okay. So you have a motion to accept Second. from from day first, Arthur, did you? Yeah, first sure and the second. Okay. okay. You call the roll. You sure. Dr. Kellerman. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Goldstein. Yes. Ms. Novick. Yes. Ms. Peters. Yes. Mr. Albers. Yes. Okay. Uh, committee reports there are approved. none. Staff reports, director? Um, these are reports were fairly straightforward and self explanatory. There were a couple of um, points I did want to make. Uh, the, uh, most of my this month has really been spent on uh, finalizing evaluation forms doing reviews of all the staff um, and uh, reviewing and revising all the job descriptions, <laughs> which has been the, uh, it's an ongoing process right now, but that will be, that is the first step um, as we start looking at establishing salary ranges and uh, pay grades as well. So that's been um, interesting and fun and I have gotten a lot of help from the department heads, so I wanted to thank them for that. The other thing that I did want to point out, um, on the statistics sheet in the report, you, if you've looked at it carefully, you might notice that the, online, the statistics for the online databases are not included. But that is because there's, um, there's a change in the way that we are actually gathering the statistics now, where they're actually going to be gotten from the vendors themselves. And um, because of that change, we're not able to report the statistics in the same manner that we have been all year, so rather than report two different things, um, we're keeping those off until we can get those uh, statistics to organized and to make sense. Um, moving As we go into uh, 2013, as I said, we're going to be uh, compiling and gathering statistics from the vendors themselves, and we're actually going to be reporting on sessions, how many, people, how many times people log in, and searches which I think is a more useful number as we look at the database usage and, and decide, uh, you know, make decisions on the collection based on those. So, um, so you will not see the online database statistics for this month or next, so you'll start to see those in the January report again. And then I did want to point out the, there is a decrease in the RVP numbers for the Chicago Public Library patrons. Um, there does reflect approximately a 30% decrease in the visible borrowing from them, and we will continue to monitor that over the next couple of months as we had decided previously. So. so that was all I had in addition to the written report. We're all good? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> And I don't envy your job and going through and rewriting all those job descriptions. <laughs> that is a tough one. Corporate counsel, anything this evening? I don't have much to uh, report. Uh, the, the one thing of note that, that uh, happened legislatively was uh, there was, apparently was a, a groundswell to the state legislatures about the, the fact that the petition filing deadline was, you know, mm -hmm. with, the, with the number of days, it fell on. Um, December 24th, uh, and so there were a number of municipalities that are traditionally close early on December 24th, and so they would have had to have a, a clerk available to receive petitions. Until five, five reference, they, reference. So they prevailed upon the legislature to extend the filing deadline so that the, the last day to file petitions for the election in the spring is December 26th. So I'm not sure if it really affected us, but I did print out a little bit on that. And, and we've made that 
change the um, informational packets for uh, library trustee candidates are both, we have some at the adult services reference desk, and um, all of the links for those uh, forms are also on the homepage of, our, of the new website, and we have indicated that the change in the by the date. That Great. Day, so. so nothing nothing other than that this, this week? Good to know. Thank you. Um, unfinished business as it regards the carpet request for proposal. This is confusing to some degree. <laughs> yes, it is a little. <laughs> um, so everyone has seen the packet of information. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to at least glance through it. I did try to <laughs> Uh, summarize the proposals and the spreadsheet as uh, Mr. Ellers has pointed out it is still a little confusing because of course even though um, I felt the RFP was pretty clear in what I was asking for not everyone you know submitted the report exactly as as requested so um, one of the things I did look for I asked for was a breakdown by different rooms because of the real possibility that we might want to do this in stages and I think that now that I have seen this and done some research on some other issues that it is the way that I'm recommending that we proceed. Um, the, uh, the lowest bid from Trend Carpet, I uh, was a little concerned that that was uh, about why that was so low and I believe that it's probably that low because they're not paying prevailing wage. and. Um, so that, that is a concern any time you're doing any kind of work on a public building. So. One, uh, I believe one, it's well. that low. I did a little research. Mm -hmm. I believe it's that low because it's a family-run company. It, it doesn't have the overhead of a national company. Possibly. Um, because I did call the references. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I, I noticed in your summary that when it came to trend, mm -hmm. they were all, on, on the other ones, the pros and cons, there were statements. But when it came to trend, there were questions. Mm -hmm. So I decided that, you know what, I wanted to answer those mm -hmm. questions. Those were good questions. Mm -hmm. So I spoke to, um, I spoke to... Well, Susan Dusky. Oh, no, actually. Sarah Dusky. No, me. I didn't speak oh. to her. No, she's the... No, I spoke to Brian Milano, mm -hmm. who um, was listed as one of the references. Mm -hmm. And I was frank and told him, you know, our, our um, question was about that, that it came in lower. Mm -hmm. And he said that was initially his concern too, but he thought he would try them once and see. They have a very large um, construction company, this Belial Construction Company, and he has been using them almost exclusively now for the last four years. Mm -hmm. And he says he's absolutely satisfied with them. Um, that they do what they say they're going to do when they're going to do it. And that it, it's not, not just, I had asked him initially, was he happy with this rock bottom restaurant? And he said, that doesn't even begin to cover the scope of what they do for us. They've done child care um, places for us, hemodialysis um, facilities, medical facilities, um, residential homes, and commercial properties. Mm -hmm and that he has been super satisfied with him. Because I, you know, I obviously had the same mm -hmm. concern that you did too, but since there were questions there, I thought, okay, let's figure it out. Because I thought, hmm, if we get $20,000 that we can spend on something I, I else would, in the I library. Would, I would caution the board, and that's fine. I, I have actually used Trent. They did install carpet in my own home. and. It was okay, <laughs> so, but but that being said, if the board, I, I would like to, if the board chooses to go with that bid, I would like to get in writing from them that they are paying for their wage um, before, uh, if, if that, and that if, if that is included in their cost, then certainly that 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 may change the, the recommendation. But um, that was not addressed in their bid at all, and it was one of the questions. It was one of the requirements of the bid. Of the proposal, the request for the proposal. But, I'm sorry, did they break out the, the cost for? They broke it out, um, and not in the way that I had requested. They did not break out the different rooms. They quoted all the rooms together, and they broke out the stairs. Actually. I thought I said a breakout for. Well, I, I had two 
two tablets about thoughts. And then, I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry. sorry. Just, you know, we'd be looking for a, a, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I do want to second though that, uh, that what uh, Pam said is, is true. Is, is, is there, you know, we're obligated to pay for that and we're going to make sure that our contractors are paying for that and we're so I just want to make sure that just so that we don't have a problem down the road with uh, someone uh, filing a later complaint against us. And, and I, you know, I think we'd be satisfied with the state of that. Yeah, when I talked to this guy, he said that he felt since it was a, a family-owned local company that that's probably where the difference came in was in the amount of overhead. And the reason that they went to them initially is because their national headquarters is in Crestwood. And I guess these guys are located in Glendale Heights mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And that's how they ended up with them initially. Well, as a, as a public body, we have some uh, stricter rules in terms of today and what than a privately owned company would have. So, um, I, like I said, if, if the board should choose to go down this road, I don't have a problem with that, but we can need a statement that they're paying prevailing wage because that will cause problems for us in the future. What is, what is prevailing wage in... It's a stab, well, it's no, no, the, uh, <laughs> prevailing wage is, is um, there's a statute that's, that says that the, you know, the public bodies are going to pay the prevailing wage. And so every every uh, year the, the owner of the Department of Labor establishes the prevailing wage um, for, uh, the Different various, services. For, the various, for the various counties. And those include, you know, uh, uh, there's a whole list of uh, specific uh, labor categories. And so it'll have uh, what the prevailing wage is, you know, for a truck driver, for a laborer, for a people, for a Is this tied in with union? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. No, I, it, it's the, the Department of Labor establishes what that prevailing wage is in Cook County, Illinois. Okay. And they do that every year in, in, uh, in uh, June, I believe. Okay. How are we going to handle the asbestos problem? The, well, if we proceed as the way the way that I'm recommending that we do that we do just the youth services department for now, um, there is no asbestos issue in that in the youth services department. The there is under the basement there is asbestos tile in the staff lounge area, but not in the children's area. So that will not be an issue for that particular area. And the stairs. Going the stairs, the I floor. looked at the, the plan, and as far as I can determine, the stairs are not asbestos right. either. So okay. we, should be, we should be okay if we choose to do that at the same time. Um, one of the things, which, uh, getting to a new business that I would like to have the board uh, meet to discuss how we are going to move forward with other building issues, particularly the asbestos that's a bit, um, on the mezzanine level. Um, and that is a, a bigger discussion that I, I don't want to have this evening because I think there's other information that I'd like to get to the board. Um, so for the two, the youth services area, that's not an issue. Are we only going to commit for that particular area? Is yes, that, what you're saying? Th that is my recommendation at this point, is to move forward with the youth services area because quite frankly that, um, for a couple of different reasons, uh, it is long, 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 long overdue. That carpet on that floor is about 40 years old, I have been told. <laughs> Isn't there a tile underneath? There is, I'm not sure what is underneath there, but it's not asbestos. If it's tile, it is asbestos. That is, the yeah, building has we've got their report. We Remember, report. we have the report. The other issue was um, installed 40 years ago. Well, our, we've got a, there is, there is a report from, it used to be called Midwest, uh, I forget the whole type, the whole name of it, but we have a report that had, they did a, a it was approximately 10 years ago, and they went through the whole building, and there is a, it's a, a whole booklet yeah. that uh, indicates all the areas where there's asbestos throughout the building, and the use service area, there is not. So, okay. um, so I have I a report. Yeah, because certainly, I mean, like I said, there, that's one of the larger areas that there is not asbestos in the building. Um, there are, like I said, the staff lounge area there is, but in that youth services the basement there is not. The there. mezzanine and yeah. certainly all of the main floor except for the area right near the east entrance. So, but yeah, so that the, is not an issue. the moving of the shelving to install? The shelving, I've actually had, um, there's a company that does move shelves. Uh, Hallett Movers and uh, the Jack Hallett came out last week, week before. I can't remember the exact date now, I apologize. And walked through the area that, uh, walked through the youth services area and 
was going to get me a quote first by the uh, beginning of the week and then by the end of the week, and I have not had it yet. So there is, they can move those shelves. Those are wooden shelves in the youth services area, so actually the books will have to come off the shelves and the shelves moved. They can't keep the books on them, like if it were metal shelving, they have actual machines that will move the metal shelving with the books on them. So I'm waiting to hear back from him in terms of how much that will cost. I, I don't have an idea, I don't have a ballpark figure on that, but I would ask that the board include um, uh, you know, funds for having them come in to do that because it has been determined that it would be very, very difficult for the staff to, to, to do that in order to get the resources area done. I have a number of questions. Okay. Um, sticking to the trend, mm -hmm. just to start, uh, I, one thing that I was positive about is the fact that they have, they're local and they do their jobs locally, which means the workmen are people they work with them done the jobs that we could check on. Like, oh, what you oh, are you talking about? Right. Right. Oh, right. the other thing is that I wanted, I'm sorry to interrupt, when you were talking about moving the stacks, mm -hmm. on the bid for trend, they include moving the furniture. Not not the stacks. <laughs> they won't be moving the stacks. That, that would be like oh, standard. Says, yeah. Trend to take up existing carpet and move furniture is correct. Right. That furniture. does not include, that does it's not include the stacks. No. Well, they say furniture, things like chairs, the desks, it does not include the stacks. That is, that is, there is no carpeting company that will move those. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. What I was trying to say is the fact that their jobs are local, that means the workmen that they're sending out here are people they've used before, probably, as opposed to some of the other companies that are more national. The jobs quoted under Empire, none of them were in the Chicago area, if I remember. So that impressed me in that sense. Now, whether these jobs are uh, equivalent to a library, that I can't speak to. Some of them have the library. Mm -hmm. The other thing that stuck out in my mind about the trend in particular, they say we advise using broad room on these areas, meaning the stairs mm -hmm. in the bathroom room, but stairs in general. Nobody else suggested that everybody else they say carpet tiles are not recommended over stairs. Everybody else talked about carpet tiles and stairs. If I there was, um, I don't believe that probably mentioned that because when uh, each of the companies came out to measure and to walk through the space, um, the discussion of Bradley on the stairs was made by a group one of them. Oh, so okay. it's, it's it's pretty much okay. a standard. Um, it was, that it was, I, think, I, I don't think the other ones had. Yeah, I thought I read that they one of them in particular. I thought I read. I think um, there tile. was the tiles and style had recommended some rubber thing for the stairs, which is not something that I was interested. In, but they yeah. did they did say that that was an option. But the other companies did, did tell me that you can't put carpet tiles on the stairs and there would be a combination of carpet tiles and broad loom in those areas that carpet tiles don't, right. don't work I effectively. I don't like carpet tiles, besides the point. I'll tell you why I don't like them is I think they show the wear and tear much faster on the edges. And so you start seeing fraying of the edges between the two tiles. I think that probably depends on the installation too, to yes, some extent. Yes, definitely. Um, they're highly recommended in any kind of commercial building. Right, because now. they're easier to fix. Because you get a stain and you can just... No, I, I, no, I mean, I, I really do understand the positives. The other issue we have, we did brought them in large areas, is that uh, unless we actually glue those that carpet down, just with the sheer uh, weight rolling of the carts in particular, the little move. books. Yeah, so you'll have, and you'll see there's areas where we've got issues like that, where there's bubbles in the carpet. Do you have carpet tiles now, or is it carpet broken? That's currently, yeah. we have carpet tiles nowhere in this library, that's so right. it's all. Yeah, it, it's got me a little nervous, and under that question, only one company mentioned anything about guarantee or warranties. I only saw it in one company. And I only had about 15 minutes to read this, so. Because I, I get. All of them are going to have, I mean, the carpets all come with warranties. Okay, so. then what about the installation? Installation is, 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 is fairly standard. It's usually a year okay. for installation. I think that's a fairly yeah, standard. Because I didn't see the that certainly. I want to know they have a year. Right, and certainly those would all be things that we would, we would, and I would with whomever we chose, that we would be in the contract. 
Okay. So, but, but usually it's a year for installation and then whatever warranties come with the actual carpets themselves. Okay. Uh, another question. Under the asbestos mm -hmm. quote, mm -hmm. they said they would, if I recall, they said they would remove the carpet, the tile underneath, etc. If they do that, does that lower the quotes that the carpet people are giving us? This is a whole. This is a separate thing, the asbestos quote, and I included that just to give the board. Right. Um, no, I understand that, but when we get to no, that, no, because place, what will happen, um, asbestos when they do the abatement, basically we're just removing the asbestos, and so we would have to make arrangements then to do any floor covering that we. No, I, yeah. But would but the carpet be, would be ripped up to abate the asbestos? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the quote would, was five thousand dollars for the room. Save money. It's simple. If they quoted yeah. five thousand dollars for room X that oh, has asbestos, saying, will it come down to four thousand or something? Right, because they're getting rid of and ripping out the carpet. The price for any carpet, any carpet quote that we got for an area that was abated would be lower because they we wouldn't have to be paying for removal of the that's carpet. Right, yes, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that would. It needs to be remembered in for future plans. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it should be lower because they're not having to, to rip right. up the carpet that will be gone. Yeah. How about the legality of removing asbestos? In terms of. In terms of percentage of the, uh, the cost to the, as the law states. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly, would if when and if we move forward on removing asbestos anywhere in the building, um, we would get absolutely a number of, of additional quotes. This was just one that I had had someone come in because I wanted to know what options were available to us. Well, I um, really about the law. So no, I, I understand what you're saying. So we would have to look at what the various quotes were and then um, take a look at the the law and what those percentages are. So without without having those exact numbers. Um, you know, I mean, certainly we will follow the law. I mean, we'll, you know, yeah, we have to. So, yeah, we, yeah absolutely. <laughs> so, but without having those exact numbers, you know, yeah. I'll be good. Okay. So far, questions. When okay. we get to the other guys, I have more questions. I don't have more worries. The guarantee was that they did pay prevailing. They had to. They had to tell us that. I mean, they right. had to, and trying to not. So, and that, that's just a concern of mine. And I definitely, they need. They need to let us know just because that causes us problems later on if they do not. Right. So, so that that would be a phone call. And a letter back. To they us. they would need to signatures. Yeah. Well, the other thing, if you do trend, I don't mean to interrupt, but I guess I have. Um, if you do trend, then they didn't break out the, the room. Um, actually, inside they did. In, inside of here they did. Oh, they did? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Because then, you couldn't, if they didn't break it out, you wouldn't really be able to compare apples to apples. Yeah. This, this page did, here. Then that would make it easier. There's such a difference in trend in the other ones. I well, they, they didn't really break it down because mm -hmm. they, no, it's still I, a bunch it's, of rooms. It's, it's, if you look, for example, um, they, they grouped the mezzanine level, ground level, Youth Services Department, reference desk, and office area all together. So they broke it down that way. So they, I don't, I, I can't look at this, and I don't know how much it's going to cost to do youth services. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So that's, I mean, while they broke it down, they didn't break it down in the manner um, that we had requested, so that we could. Ask. But we could get that number. You they would have, would, I would suggest that you'd have to do that before yeah. you decide to go. Right. There's such a big difference. I. I feel uncomfortable not giving them a second chance to put the statement in about the prevailing wage and then to quote the way that you need it quoted so we can make a really good That's fine. Judgment Does the board, would the board want to do that and hold off and making a decision until... There's a third, I mean, there's a $30,000 difference in the yeah, job and I just think that's worth okay. taking well, another look at. Use that $30,000 if this is good to make further improvements. Well, in if library. it is, we might find out right. they made a mistake on their quote. Exactly. I just, yeah. I just no, think I we agree should with have looked at one more. Okay, yeah, I do too. So, is it the board's um, preference to, I will call trend and have them come out and remeasure for just the youth services area so that we can get it, so we are comparing? I, I'd like to be able to make a real... to get a prevailing wage statement from them. Yeah. Um, 
May I suggest then that if we're setting a date to discuss building issues, or or because I, I would like to move forward with this sooner. Well, could, kick off that meeting. Could this we topic. could we vote yeah. tonight to agree in principle that you services and the stairs would be covered, and so that we would. We can't vote if there's no vendor. We can't. Oh, I mean, we can say those are the areas, those are the to areas cover, that we want to cover, we're not so that we that. so that we define the scope of what we want. If we could, if we could agree on the scope. The thing that the I thing that you're really voting on is you're voting the award of the contract. Yeah, you're not voting. Okay. So you're not really, you don't need to vote to decide that we want to measure this area and we want to think about carbon in this area. What you're really voting on is when you decide to spend the money. Oh, I understand. And you award the contract. <coughs> I understand. I was just thinking within the board, the secondary question is, do we want to um, just keep it right now to use services, which I think makes a whole lot of sense, and, and that stay away? Yeah, you could certainly or does anybody board. else in the board, I mean, the board think that, that, more that, should that be, more should be included than that? Does anybody else feel like right now we should do more than that? No. I don't I think, think it Besides, it's almost safer, let's say, trend. If we decide on trend or exactly. XYZ company does not such a great job, we have troubles and they don't come through. Before you you could move department. to another <laughs> another vendor and not have the whole library. I it. can't so argue with that train of thought. I like so. that idea. Okay, so is it is it? Do I have the board's permission then to contact Trent uh, requiring about prevailing wage, having them come out and yeah. measure new services in that stair area? And get that presented back to the way you want. Okay, yeah. well, please. Another Thank question you. about carpet tiles. Did you see symbols? Yes. Would you say they were soft enough? For youth services in particular, where the kids sit on the floor. <laughs> Have you sat on the floor in youth services? I can't <laughs> sit on the floor and get uh, back up. Okay. Virtually, <laughs> anything <laughs> will be an improvement <laughs> on what's on the youth services. Oh, no, yes. I know. Did you want yeah, to bring them in? Did you want to bring them in, Pam? I can't, but I have nothing from Trent. What I've already said, the is I don't want to see scraped knees. But they're still there. They're fine for that. Okay. Because they do know carpet tiles tend to have a thinner, lower pile. Okay, so you also, I will. You also included uh, a letter from Holy and Asbestos Removal mm -hmm. and Calculation Corporation. Right. And did you review that in conjunction with the installing of the tie of the carpet? We're not doing that part of the building. This was for um, the use services. No, this was the mezzanine. Right. And the uh, your site. I was informed at the beginning of this process that there was we cannot do anything with the mezzanine. We cannot remove that carpet that's currently there because the the VAT tile underneath is friable right, right now. Right. Um, so we can't. We couldn't put anything over it. We can't remove it no, without. I'm just curious why you included that. I, I included that because for informational purposes, um, just because Good. at this point. Uh, I personally, and I believe it was also with the board, I don't think any of us really had a clear idea of what abatement would cost. And so it was useful, I thought, for at least myself as I thought about Good how words. we wanted I to I was forward. pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it came in much lower yeah, than I was. Right, and I thank you for taking the initiative to so, start the um, process. So that was, that's the only reason I included that, because as we think about how we want to use the space that we have in the future, these are things that are going to have to be done. So um, if the board is committed to remaining in this building, there's a building is, is absolutely going to have mm -hmm. to take place. Um, so that's the only reason that that's included, just as we think about the future. Um, and so we've got some basis, because as I said, as we talked about abatement in the past, none of us really had an idea if it was going to be $100,000 or you know $50,000 or whatever it was. So this was just a way to say, this looks like it's re more reasonable than we anticipated and maybe something that we can do in other areas as we think about usage of the space. Do we, so we're not actually voting at this point because we're not awarding the contract. Right, so I think in your minutes you would, you would show just a, a discussion and, and highlights of the discussion and okay. it would just be no action. Okay. Okay. okay, and do I have to put anything here? No, no. no. Okay. no. So I will contact Trend um, with the questions that the board and I have as well. And, um, we will bring this up as a point of discussion, either the next board meeting or the special meeting that we will we will plan, whichever comes first. Sure. And if you're going to vote on it at the special meeting, just 
have it on your agenda. Yeah. For the, you know, that, that's part of the discussion. Yeah. All right. So we can move on to new business, mm -hmm. and that's the setting of library board meeting dates for 2013. Um, I put this on the agenda uh, for a couple reasons. Now's the time to set those dates if they should change um, because the Open Meetings Act does require that we post them our year, a year, uh, the following, the coming up year's meeting dates. Um, as I explained in my board preparation too, that it, due to the earliness, and it seems like particularly in 2013, the second Thursday of the month comes, <laughs> comes pretty early. Uh, it has become more difficult, especially as we've um, started to gather uh, statistical information and that sort of thing from outside vendors to get that information gathered and compiled uh, in time for the board meetings. Um, I have suggested moving the date the, to the third week of the month uh, for a couple of different reasons, both to give us a little bit more time to make sure that we've got all of the reports for the previous month uh, piled in a manner that is both understandable and <laughs> readable. And also that uh, it does spread the village meetings around a little bit because the village board meets in the second and fourth months. Uh, I had suggested Wednesdays, though, however, um, several board members had indicated that that was not the best day for them and had suggested possibly um, moving the date to the third Thursday, just moving it a week back. Um, as I said, this was just a point of discussion that if there was ever any thought of changing the meetings, that this would be the time to do so. It would be a time to post and um, make those public. I have a question for Frank about that. Yeah. I believe that the meetings are set in the bylaws. Is there anything that has to be done special if we're amending the bylaws? Uh, you know, that's a good question. Um, if the meeting date is set in the bylaws, you would we should amend the bylaws to, you know, so you can make a motion to amend the bylaws. Um, I don't have a copy of it. It's right here. Is it, is it, it does say the second Thursday of each calendar month at 7 p.m. So you, so you make a motion to amend, to amend the, bylaws. the bylaws. So nothing, just the special thing within the motion. Okay. And then, bylaws and then there's yeah, certain rules in terms of where we have to post when we're changing a meeting day like that, it's like 10 days in different newspapers, and I have all that information should the board decide to, to make this change. It also looks better, I think, for you on signing checks on a Tuesday. It gives them a little more time for the, uh, to be prepared rather than on a Monday. Yeah. Uh, if we had gone with the Wednesday night as opposed to the Thursday night. So I would say let's do the third. Oh, yeah, because it would change by Tuesday. Third, 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 right. Yeah, it would have no change. So I would have no issues with the third Thursday. I would have a problem with that. The third Thursday? How about you, Dave? I don't have any problem. I make a motion that we amend our bylaws to reflect a movement to the third Thursday of a month for our board meetings. And can I have a second? Second, thank you, right there. Motion to amend bylaws. Change the meeting date. Change meeting date. Oh, Thursday. 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 Yeah. That'll take care of that. And then I add, if you want to add to it, and then for the year 2013, the board meet on the third Thursday of each month. Right. Please add oh, beginning, Jan beginning no, January. Well, I'm just, well, just for the January. January 2013, the board will meet on the third Thursday of each month. So it's kind of a two part. Motion to amend my laws to change meeting date from second to third Thursday of every calendar month. And the board shall meet on that third Thursday. Well, why don't you do that? Well, you know what? Now that I think about it, make two motions. Okay? Um, so make that motion. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a motion to change the bylaw. Right. Then there's, there's a motion, motion to make the bylaw. Motion to amend the bylaws first, and then, then we'll make the next second motion. Okay. I have a motion to amend the bylaws to change the meeting date from the second to the third Thursday of every calendar. There's a first and a second from. Second. Second from Trustee Novick. Any other questions or comments? If not, can you call the roll? Okay. Mr. Elders. Yes. Mr. Kellenack? Yes. 
Mr. Goldstein. Yes. Ms. Novick. Yes. And myself. Yes. The motion is approved. And the second motion is for yes. Frank. I would suggest that you make a motion that uh, the for calendar year 2013, the regular board meeting will be on the third Thursday of each month. Why yes. is why is that important? Oh, somebody says. Because you're because now you're we're setting the meeting, the meeting dates. dates. Now you're actually uh, setting the uh, dates. Uh, setting the date. Yeah, the previous motion was to amend the bylaws. Now we're actually the setting the dates. So now we need a motion to change the official meeting date of library board of trustees meetings to the third Thursday of the month. Yeah, motion, for Kellen, motion for calendar year 2013, the board of trustees meeting will be on the third Thursday of every month. Now I need a motion. That was it. Motion okay. to so Peters. Peters. Peters first, second from Calumac. Yes. Any comments, questions, concerns? If none, can you call the vote? Mr. Albers. Yes. Dr. Kellenhag. Yes. Mr. Goldstein. Yes. Ms. Novick. Yes. Ms. Peters. Yes. Motion right. is approved unanimously. Thank you. That Fantastic. should make things a little bit easier for us to get things ready for you guys. So I appreciate that. All right. Last bit of new business is planning meetings. Yes. Um, <laughs> I would like to ask the board to uh, meet to discuss uh, what we're going to do with the building uh, and set some priorities as we think about our future. And um, since we're now meeting on the third Thursday of the month, that would be January 17th, would be our next regular board meeting. Um, I would hope, particularly if uh, the carpet is going to be the first agenda item on that meeting, um, if we could possibly <laughs> meet earlier than that, if the tent still works for people, um, or any time. Uh, I'm wide open the week of the 7th, if that's... So you're suggesting that we meet the 10th and the 17th in January? Or any time earlier than that. Um, I would say the week of the 7th would be uh, the earliest that I would want to meet, because as I said, there's some... There's some holidays right, and, and stuff. I want to make sure that I have all the documentation and all of my thoughts in order before we, we start discussing. So um, any time during... Do you want the full board for the I you that, want the building and grounds committee? I, I would prefer the full board. I think that it's important for the full board um, to be part of this. Um, so any time during the seventh is is that acceptable to during the week of the seventh? Um, we can do Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, whatever. Tuesday's hard for Tuesday does but Wednesday or Thursday. And you have tennis. So so <laughs> I That's fine. So it's going to be Thursday for so Thursday. 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 <laughs> Thursday is fine. So we will meet on January 10th to mm -hmm. discuss. Do I need a motion for that? Yes, because you're setting, setting a special, special meeting. Setting a special, special meeting. meeting. Okay. Yeah. What time would you like to hold a special meeting? And do I have to say the purpose mm -hmm. of the meeting is but for, to discuss building improvements? It's not entirely necessary. Oh, okay. You could, you special could meeting. Motion to set. Does 7 p.m. work for everyone? Yeah, January, what was that, 7 p.m.? January 10, 10 at 7 p.m. Thursday, January 10. Um, that will be the special meeting. The regular board meeting will be January 7. Okay. So motion to set a special meeting Thursday, 7 p.m., January 10, 2013. Second. You made the motion? I read the motion, sure. <laughs> you made the motion, second from? Second. <laughs> Comments, questions, or concerns? If none, call the vote, please. Mark Elders. Yes. Dave Kellnick. Here. Yes. Arthur Goldstein. Yes. <clears throat> Robert Novick. Yes. Andy Peters. Yes. Approved unanimously. All right. Uh, communications that came in since the last meeting, there were none. I have a question yes. that I think would fall under your business. Okay. Um, I, when, or maybe this should be come up at your planning meeting. I believe the Black Baxter room desperately needs some kind of railing system for those that are elderly or 
of the other kids. Yeah, that first step's a doozy, isn't it? It's not only the, the, the first step, it's all the steps, because you've got chairs, but they're awkward, and they lean over. And it, I've seen where railings are just on one level, and it's like a U-shape. And it, Make the, no, I think that would be a, a no for our Building. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Make those we're notes. also talking about building a platform straight out okay. and making yeah. it separate handicapped. Yeah. Make those notes. Yeah, yeah, but some of them right. can't hear so well, so they want to be forward. You know. Well, you can't have it off. You can. No, but you got to try to address it. We, um, and as a physical therapist, I do care. We have some other thoughts as well on the Baxter room, and that is certainly was one of the things that I okay. wanted to bring up. So, so um, it's in there. Yeah, and certainly if anyone else has other issues that uh, they want me to research before that meeting or get information on. The elevator hands. Yes, that was also um, on my list. I write this here. And I need to check with Claude to see if they got back with him, and he just didn't tell me, or if they just haven't been out. So. Um, <coughs> I know that at the same time we were asking them to come out, and I did actually do research on those elevators. They're called Luva <laughs> elevators. It's low use, low limited access. Limit, limited access. access. Yeah, something limited access. Yeah. So anyway, um, <coughs> so I will. Yes, I will also find out more about that. But in the as I said in the interim, if there's other things that come to mind that people would like me to do additional research on, just please let me know. All right, there were no communications. Uh, public comments on non-agenda items? Mm -hmm. I'm Larry Levin. I'm at 8400 Kelly at Morton Road. Uh, one of the other libraries just passed their budget for next year, and as you folks have done, they kept their budget exactly the same as they did. The 2013 budget will be the same as the 2012 budget. However, to do so, they eliminated a couple of their outreach programs. The board of directors of that library have voluntarily taken it upon themselves to go out and solicit donations and contributions from the community in an effort to restore those programs. Just, just that's just information to pass on to you. No, appreciate the info. Thank you. Thanks. And happily, we didn't have to do that. Not, not yet. Yeah, not <laughs> yet. <laughs> we'll see what we have to do with the And a second. Second. Any objections? None. We are adjourned. Enjoy the holidays, folks. Thank you.